I tried pressing the switch, but it's broken, so I can't get it to stay. If I had something like a rubber band, I might be able to hold it in place. And I was gone for like 20 seconds, what happened? This game is bananas, I love it. Um, oh my god. Am I gonna hold it in place with the condom? <laughs> Stretch the condom, just fucking call it condom, with both hands, ooh, and hook it over the switch. It takes more strength than I expected. <laughs> I managed to connect the ends and fix the switch in place. Huh, you're pretty imaginative. <laughs> nudge, nudge. Use the condom to repair the circuit board. Amazing. No, leave it there. It's fine. Going back down to the elevator. I can't believe that uh, that was real. Touch it. Your buttons for the first floor to the fifth. Push one of the buttons. So I thought nothing happens. My ritual was not good enough. Oh wait, there's another box on the first floor. Oh, that's not what I meant to do. I'm so used to pressing back that it turns you around when you get out of the elevator. Okay, so there's a box over here. There it is. It's a damaged circuit breaker. The copper bar is broken. That's the only thing that's obviously damaged. I try moving the switch. There doesn't seem to be anything wrong with it. Spoon? I take out the spoon and place it on the bar. Metal conducts electricity, right? I see, so electricity will be able to pass through that. Yeah, I'm not sure it'll actually work though. Might be enough for what we're trying to accomplish right now. I force the spoon behind the copper bar and electrocute the fuck out of myself. And it sticks in place rather nicely. I use a spoon to repair the circuit breaker. Now let's go up. Now let's go up. Get in an elevator. Push button. Oops, push button. Nope. Fuck. Is there a better condom that the box wants? <laughs> He needs it for later off. I don't know how safe that condom will be after being stretched as it is. I think he's better off just, just walking to the, do the, 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 the convenience store down the street and looking some old underpaid man in the eye as he puts down like a bunch of boxes of condom. A bunch of boxes. Yeah, man. Listen, Mashita's way too too sundry, so we just gotta own it for him. Wait, why do I have five? <laughs> oh, I guess I have five batteries. You know what? Fuck it. Sex has been solving. Nope. Okay. You have five sex toys in your backpack. Finger guns? What is even going on anymore? Sweet buttery biscuits. Listen. I don't know. Mashita sent us to a love hotel. He didn't even come with. We found a condom. We found a vibrator. We took the vibrator that we found in an old abandoned prostitute elevator. <laughs> prostitute fresh and fruity. Why is not anything happen? Fucking use the... Damn it. I'm just gonna use the fucking vibrator on everything. It's not even that late, but I'm. <laughs> Good night, Marie.
Shit, I didn't mean to get back in the elevator. Fucking Damon with us is just like, what the fuck is this guy doing? And I'm just walking around poking everything with the elevator. <laughs> or with the elevator. <laughs> fuck me, with the um vibrator. Like, does this work? Okay. Officially. If anyone has any ideas, feel free to share. I'm now open to suggestion. Because uh question marks are in my head. I don't know how to get them out. Wasn't there a door you couldn't open in the third floor? Yeah. I I mean I think I'm pretty sure I checked it. I'll go check it again. It's like the whatchamacallit? The frame of it is warped. And I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with it. Third floor, it is this door. Right here. Uh, but it doesn't move. Oh fuck, he fucking comments on it if you pull on it. I've just went straight to using items. Uh, what direction is that? One not involved with opening or closing, so from side to side. Try pulling it on the frame again and I'll try out my idea. Thank you, bro. <laughs> you saved my life. I'm pulling it again as I'm told. Damon puts his hands on the side of the knob and leans his weight toward the hinge. Then the door, which had stubbornly refused to open, now abruptly pops open. Wow, it actually opened. Just a little life wisdom. I live in an old traditional house, so I deal with my fair share of troublesome doors. It makes sense, you never know what's going to come in handy. There might be something inside. After all, this guest room seems... different. No shit! Yeah, we should be careful. I mean, it looks the same as all the other bathrooms, so that's a good start. The dark red strains. It seems to be dried blood. Someone must have lost a lot of blood going by how much is on the floor. What the hell happened here? Oh, those are fireworks. I heard weird popping. Uh, there's a shelf stuck to the wall. It's lined with hairdressing products, cologne, and lotion. Some of the bottles still have a bit of liquid left, but most are empty. I check through all the bottles on the shelf. I find a tube that still has something left inside. Maybe toothpaste? I look at the label. Didn't think that was toothpaste. White petroleum, huh? Used as a lubricant and moisturizers. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yep, definitely will come in handy. <laughs> I hate this game. What is it making me do? Or, more appropriately, who? The toilet section off to the guy. My wallpaper isn't particularly dirty. Yeah, it looks like it's been taken good care of. Touch it. Go inside and flush the toilet. Why? The toilet's a, a horrible coughing sound and spurts up some black water. <laughs> Please. <laughs> when I look up, I notice something stuck on the side of the tank. Found a worn out towel. Hey, it's been a while since I found one of those. Ooh, there's a lot of handprints. Bloody. There's a bathroom section off of glass that looks like it has a rather extravagant bathtub. I step inside and dig around in the bathtub. Hmm? I immediately notice a large object that looks like a small log. <laughs> I'm sorry? Hello? What's this? <laughs> I stare at it until I realize what it is. Got wooden horse head. Aww, that's not what I thought it was. <laughs> what the fuck is a horse head doing in the bath? <laughs> and Damon seems shocked. It might be a little late to saying this, but you really are impressed. What's impressive about me finding a fucking- Why do you guys assume the worst immediately? I found a fucking- Condom? I found fucking lube? And I found fucking vibrator, burra. This is normal at this fucking hotel. This is a love hotel for banging. <laughs> God damn it. We're leaving this one. For doing the do. 
Wait, go back in there. Horse. Oh, can I not use the holden hand? This colored wooden horse said the neck looks like it was attached to a body before it was broken off. It was submerged in dirty water so long that it stinks slightly. Okay, so I can't use it on that. That comment hasn't changed. I mean, I'm a trash panda, but come on, this chapter ain't being subtle. It's really not. But maybe now the elevator works. Just because I found the quote unquote item that was needed to um, continue or whatever. Gonna quick check. I don't think so, but I'm gonna try. Nope, yeah, didn't think so. Okay. Okay. What if I put the lube on the power box? You vibrator on it. Y oh, oh. Get back in that menu, please. Um. Use the lube on it. Wait, what does the key ring say? Take out the emergency key ring. I've taken it out, but I can't think of a way to use it. Tag reads emergency use. A number of keys are on it, including a small one that is labeled firefighter. <gasps> Holy shit, you're right! There's a tiny keyhole at the- oh, Yeah, I see. That's- that's the firefighter. Take out an emergency can on my bag. I find a small key that has the word fire engraved on it. Stick it in the fire switch. Slowly turn it on position. But... I can't turn it. It doesn't seem lubricated enough. If I try to force it, it might break. Oh. I think that's the right key, but you need to put some oil on it. Use the lube on the elevator. Don't be rough now. <laughs> Slowly turn it to the on position. Something clicks. Then... Oh. <laughs> Calm down, everybody. <laughs> the elevator automatically moves to the first floor. Damon groans as he wipes sweat off his face. I can't believe it. I actually moved. Wait a second. You're the one who suggested we do a ritual. I suppose so. Still, I'm shocked. But now, finally. Yeah, we might be able to go above the third floor now. Exactly. I wonder what we'll find. Fourth floor. The elevator stopped at the fourth floor. This is the floor of death. Looks like we managed to make it up here. Yeah. Let's go. Because four in Japanese sounds like the word for death, so it is a very bad floor. But we're here! The gloomy hallway stretches ahead of us. It doesn't look all that different from the lower floors. Hi! I had a feeling I'd bump into you here. It's her. A red raincoat appears in the darkness. My grip on the flashlight becomes sweaty. Ew. That's... Damon takes a step back. Sir, other people are unnecessary. You're the only one I want to see, sir. I don't like gross or scary things. She's calling me sir again. She seems like she'll listen to what I have to say. I should try asking her something this time. Anything, really. I just need a clue. Anything that can help me save Hero, who's suffering in pain at this very moment. I'm made up, I take a deep breath, but... Uh, Damon stumbles over something and falls. Hey, are you okay? Sorry, nothing's wrong. Uh-huh. Damon falls silent as he tries to stand. I look over at him and immediately see it. The thing Damon stumbled over is... Oh, that's, uh, that's Banshee. That is Banshee. Oh shit, webs, no, and the bird just- HELL YEAH! <laughs> <laughs> Damon, 
Damon instinctively scrambles back. Three types of people. What is that? Something that looks like a giant cocoon is sticking to the floor. I can see a scarf and hat entangled in the glittering thread. They look familiar. No, it can't be. Banshee? Man, you're kidding. Banshee, can you hear me? Please say something. Murmur, murmur. I hear a muffled voice from the cocoon. You betcha it's him. He's alive. Oh. Those came out. Spiders? I quickly moved to shoo them away. <laughs> I'm sorry, everyone. But I see a red figure out of the corner of my eye. Uh. L. Damon's so panicked he's unintelligible, but I know what he's trying to say. Escaping to the elevator is our only choice. The spiders are currently not on screen, yes. Go, go! Together we rip Banshee up off the floor, carrying him like a log we stumble into the elevator. We fall into the elevator and we repeatedly slam the button to the first floor. Banshee! Banshee, can you hear me? Hey, say something! What? You have time to say, motherfucker. Uh, Demon tries to give Banshee medical treatment. Damn it, he's no longer responding. His body's going rigid. As Demon focuses on my nail. Banshee, I see something black squirming by his shoulder. You can preemptively change browsers again if you want, Marie. I have no idea what's about to happen. Uh, Damon? Huh? Ooh. I blink, and suddenly the entire elevator is filled with wriggling shadows. They come in one after another. Oh! Oh! This is a live or die! Oh no. Everyone's going to perish. Yell loudly because they don't like noise. Oh, yell loud enough to wreck my throat. The spiders visibly stop moving for a moment. Yes! Just gonna not watch till gross things stop existing. Good luck, I'll just chill and chat. Okay, that's fair. They're still coming. We need something stronger. Um, the massager? Take out the massager out of my bag, press it against the wall, and turn it on. A growling vibration runs through the walls. It's- it's called a massager, it's a vibrator. I'm watching out of the corner of my eye. A growling vibration runs through the walls. The spiders suddenly start acting strangely. I survived. The creatures vanish instantly, as if they'd only been a mirage. What's going on? Yeah, I was desperate, but I can't believe that thing had a big enough vibration to scare me. As I'm puzzling why, something slams into the elevator door hard. Hurry up and get the elevator moving. Right, I need to hit a button. But then I realize I already pushed the button a ton of times. I press the button for the first floor again. It only clicks. This metal box is stranding us. Why isn't it moving? Ooh, she's there. Oh, oh it's her! Hurry, hurry! It's obvious who she is. Oof, oof, oof. I pray silently as I jam the button. Then. We stumble out of the elevator without checking to see where we've stopped. In the first floor lobby. Did we escape? Yeah. For whatever reason, the elevator decided to move at the very last second. I doubt my praying actually worked, but... 
I'm not sure what happened, but I think we're safe. I breathe a sigh of relief, and a figure appears in the gloom. Oh, fuck, Aita. Jesus Christ. What were you guys doing in there? I mean, judging from Blue's Blue's death, she's totally alright. Yeah. Aita? Um, you're both covered in sweat. Did something happen? Of course something- Wait, Aita, did you call the elevator down here? What? Yeah, I mean it looked like it worked, so I- Did I do something wrong? Aita holds himself back timidly. It sounded like he thinks I'm mad at him. Damon slowly, silently steps up to him. Then suddenly gives him a hug. Oh! <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Aita. Well done. If you hadn't been here, we would have. True. You couldn't ask for better timing. I can't be more grateful than Suzu contacted Aita. It's more important right now. Oh, that's right. He needs emergency treatment. Come help me with him, Aita. Okay. Completely clueless, Aita helps us drag the white lump out of the elevator. What is this creepy thing? I hesitate for a moment before I reply, but he should know. Banshee. The old man from the underground shelter. What? What? Well, idiot, don't drop him. Oh, I just noticed. Aita has a ghost girl shirt. Oh, wait, let me see Aita again. Fuck. I don't get back to Kujo Mansion until almost midnight. That's not that light, you loser. My exhausted body groans in pain as I collapse onto the sofa. My head feels heavy, like it's in a fog. To top it off, things are worse than yesterday now. Banshee was sent to Diamond's ho Damon's hospital and immediately admitted. He's no longer conscious. And untrained eyes would say he's just sleeping, but he's actually fallen into a deep coma. His condition is very serious. To be honest, I wanted to go along and do something to help, but Damon chased me out of the hospital. He said I'm overworked and sleep deprived. I just stayed behind at least, not that he's replacing me, but it's good he's there. I'm frustrated with myself for thinking he'd be useless. useless. Once everything is over, I definitely need to thank Suzu. first hero, and now Banshee. At this rate, even if I keep investigating, if I don't find any clues, thinking about it makes my stomach hurt. Those two might never recover. And that's just assuming their conditions stabilize. If they get worse, something even more terrible could happen. I put my head in my hands and sigh. The red raincoat flashes in the darkness. What should I do? How do I have to keep investigating tomorrow? Once I finish looking through these documents, I should head straight to bed. Oh, buddy. Okay, okay, okay. I'm just gonna go to bed. Early morning. And I get the worst wake up call ever. A severe pain threatens to split my head. The mysterious from headache the mysterious headache from yesterday is back with vengeance. I meant to go to Diamond's hospital to see Hero and Banshee while it was light out. Ugh. Spots flash before my eyes, I can't even sit up. I pull the sheets up and wait for it to pass. I'm only just about to move by the time the sun is setting. Thunder rubbles in the distance. Sounds like the rain again. Great. I press my fingers to my temple to check. The whirlwind of pain has once again disappeared without a trace. I sigh. Mashta calls as I'm making coffee in the kitchen. He says he'll come along for tonight's investigation. He must have finally wrapped up his other cases. Yay! He mentioned that he'd drop by the hospital in between cases to see Hero and Banshee. 
seems they went berserk when they awoke and are now restrained. They refuse to eat. Relying on IVs won't work forever. I didn't expect the report to be good, but... This will be a critical point in the case. Before he hangs up, Mushta utters a warning. And this is the eleventh hour. Mashita doesn't offer a reply. The red light outside the rain-soaked window are hazy like a wilting flower. It's time to head out. <laughs> Jeez, that was ominous. I'm gonna save. We going, we going, we going. I park the car in the parking lot as always and walk over to the street in the rain. I pass down the familiar road to the hotel. You're pissed off already. You're late. What are you doing? Man in trench coat cuts an imposing figure on the wet street corner, glittering in lights. You know damn well time is of the essence right now. Diamond's prepared for the worst, too. He's made arrangements to transfer them. Someone's impatient. Yup. Imposing or attractive. Transfer them. Oh. They must be in pretty bad condition, then. I didn't mention this over the phone, but I met someone at Damon's hospital. I ran into the show. I ran into the show. Show? What was he doing there? Some of his gang hangs out here. Guess we're a hot topic with them. They've seen people in and out of the hotel. Nagishima heard about it, and they figured they were talking about you. He contacted the fortune teller, and well... So now Shows knows about the case, too. Oh, why didn't he just keep quiet? The old lady hands out business cards to anyone and everyone. It's real pain. So did you talk to Show? Why would I? He cornered me, asking for info on the case, but I drove him off. I suddenly felt uneasy. You didn't say anything unnecessary, did you? Of course not. Just said to stay out of grown-up matters. For just a moment, my vision tunnels and a blood vessel in my head throbs. Something wrong. No, I'm fine. I'm sure he doesn't want show involved either, but he really should have considered his words more carefully. I hear footsteps coming up behind me. Hi, show! I raise my head with a sudden sense of dread. Oh. Oh. Okay. But it's only Mo Moe. Thank goodness you're here after all. Good thing I came straight here. Got the results you asked me for. I look at her blankly for a moment, but then I remember I'd asked her to use her connections to investigate the rumors. Right, thanks. There's no time. Give us the short version. Oh, okay. Uh, then I'll only cover the really important parts. Um, I heard something amazing from someone who was here at the time. What, like a hotel employee? No, not like that. Jeez, when I say someone was there, I obviously meant one of the high school girls who was up to no good. You talked to one? This is legit, right? Even Mashita's interested. Only the people who use Masquerade really know what happened here. Hearing from someone involved is best. Yeah, her name's Akko. The editorial department helped me track her down. She went to a nearby school and did this part-time job, apparently. And what's really important is what Akko said about her classmate, Esko. Okay. What a generic name. Akko and Esko. Moe pulls a voice recorder from her bag and hits the play button. Yeah, a friend introduced me to a part-time job. It was whimsical. I meant I just did it on a whim. Ko's usually added the female name. So it's just like the letters, the first part of their name, and it's just, yeah. Yeah, so we were supposed to meet at that hotel masquerade. And there's a system where someone introduced us to customers. You get a lot of money from it, so everyone was dying to get hired. But one day, there was like, an incident? Uh, someone at school found out about the job. Some goody two shoe class rep, Esco, said she was gonna tell her teacher and Mura. Everyone freaked out and apologized to her, saying they'd stop. She wouldn't listen. If her parents found out, it'd be the worst thing ever. We begged, but she didn't budge. In the end, she left class saying she was going to tell the police with Anura. We were totally freaking out, so I went to the hotel that night. I mean, at that point, there was no harm in going, you know? But then, she was there. Esco was standing in front of Masquerade in the drizzling rain, in a red raincoat. 
she said she was going to the police, so who knows why she was at the hotel. But it made us all jumping on edge every day after that, except nothing ever happened. Soon after that, Masquerade shut down. I guess they uncovered something. Huh, the job? Yeah, I completely quit after that. Interesting. That's Akko's testimony. Just the important parts, though. Moe got a fascinating first-hand account. The rumors of Red, Red Riding Hood and what was written in the guest books we found at the hotel. All the pieces in the girl's confession. So what ended up happening to Usko? I don't know exactly, but apparently she stopped coming to school. According to Eiko, she just up and stopped showing up. And Masha just snorts. That's too perfect. She's probably being overly dramatic, especially that part about the red raincoat. Most people use an umbrella when it's raining. That's true. Mashita's right. It's possible that the raincoat was a sign for whoever she was waiting for, but hardly anyone comes down the street. It doesn't really fit. Is that all you have to tell us? Then hurry up and go home. Um, so I really can't come with you? I worked really hard, you know? Apparently, Moe really wants to come along. I do feel bad. She worked and got us all that info just so she can investigate with us, but... Sorry, you shouldn't be here. There have already been two victims. We can't get you wrapped up in this, too. Oh, okay. I understand. Moe nods. I guess she already, she's already over it. Fully voice acted. I don't need to read anything. Uh, you better tell me about it later, and be careful. She sounds worried about me. She disappears around the street corner. A siren echoes on the wind, and I'm not sure I'll howl in the distance. I look up at Masquerade looming over us. When the hell happened inside that hunk of concrete? There's always tragic cause to the birth of a spirit. Red Riding Hood must be the same. But I can't watch my friends die. I slowly step forward, trying to escape from the unease that's threatening to engulf me. It's not right for the dead to meddle with the living. Mashita mutters beside me. Is that a personal creed? Nah, just what I think. Mashita clicks his tongue. So, it looks like... Esko is Little Red Riding Hood, obviously. And when she went to the teacher... I assume the teacher was probably actually involved in this whole thing. And she, like, trusted him and went to him and he did something bad that made that happen. Hey. As I step into the lobby, Mashita stops in front of me. What's wrong? What a fantastic job you've done here. Huh? What are you talking about? Look. What? The lobby looks completely different. The room is covered in white. No, it wasn't like this yesterday. Thought so. I'll be fully honest, I thought he was possessed. Like, just the fact that he stopped and was started complimenting me. He's not the type to compliment. I was like, wait a second, already? <laughs> and then for a second, too. It's like, where's my sexy shirtless Masha to the picture? Yes, please. Masha to touch is one of the floating threads. <laughs> Looks like she's up the ante. Bring it! Time to make our appointment with our lady friend. Just then. Just then what? The groan of the elevator moving echoes. Oh gee! Did the elevator just come back to the first floor? That'd mean... Someone's already here. Did you see which floor it came from? No, I wasn't looking. Though I feel like it took a while between when I heard the noise and its arrival. I'm betting it's one of the upper floors. No shit. Maybe the fourth or fifth. Fifth. Yesterday we got the elevator working and managed to get to the fourth floor, but because of what happened to Banshee, we weren't able to investigate any higher. Okay, let's start on the fourth floor. Okay. I can't click on it. Hello? Do I go s Oh! I hit the button. I guess I step out now. Hello? Okay, what's this picture? 
Masquerade wife. It's a picture of a masked girl running down a trail. Well, I have no idea where that goes in the sequence. Open the door to the guest room and walk inside. Ring, ring. This one has three masks. That's interesting. Okay. <laughs> hear a faint laugh. I don't hear anything more coming from it. Just pizza sells diner. Feels like the mask is staring at me. I take it down to examine it, but it's just a mask. It still feels like it's staring at me, though. Same morgue, you stab him, we slab him. Oh god, everything's covered in webs. Stains sink, stains look like them. I touch it, but I still need to check it out. I shut my eyes and stick my fingers down the drain. I touch something hard. Something cylindrical is stuck down there. Hmm. Sadly, my fingers don't seem to be able to reach it. Something in there. It's often a prime location to hide incriminating objects. It's likely an important like, piece of evidence. We should get it. You can get it! Uh. Use the horse. The key to get it out. Use the. Thing to get it out. There's a dark red water in the bathtub. My nose rebels at the stench of iron. Okay, other room time. Boop. This one has two masks. I pick up the mask and find a talisman. Hey, thank you. I like those. Open the drawer and find a notebook. What's that? A guest book provided by the hotel. Guess right about their experience in it. I glance through the pages. The guest book's entries are clearly different from all the other ones. It covers a number of horrifying topics such as devil worship and different kinds of torture. Every page is crammed with stuff like that. It's impossible to tell which ones are delusions and which ones are actually took place. The only thing I can say for sure is that it's surging with a twisted, single-minded appetite. I silently hand over the guest book. Masha just skims through it, then smirks. Huh, <laughs> that's quite the hobby. And writing differs by the page. This was written by several guests. So he's into it. Okay. I find that hard to believe. I sincerely doubt there are so many people in the world who have such a unique hobby. They're like moths drawn to a flame. You wouldn't even know how to look at them. The pieces are finally coming together. Seems this hotel offered a special service for its perverted guests. You mean... The kind of stuff written in that guest book. Yeah, the kind of worship... The kind of work... The kids working that part-time job were probably, probably part of it, too. Guaranteed their safety and complete confidentiality, of course. After that, the one who sold his soul was probably the most nervous about that. Still... These people have quite the imagination. Mashita mutters sarcastically as he casually leaps through the pages. Then he stops. Hey, this phrase, do you know what it means? The phrase Mashita's pointing to is... Jor Jorogumo's punishment. Jorogumo? Huh? It's a spider monster from Japanese folklore that can shapeshift into a beautiful woman. Ah! I already hate it. Ah, so you do know about it. Thanks so much for the info, doll. I ignore the hint of sarcasm in his voice and read the rest of the page. Jorogumo's punishment is a re recreation of a certain recreation of a certain urban legend. You capture the largest spider you find. A wild one would be best. Sharpen the sacrifice's senses with drugs, and use a mouth mouth speculum to keep their mouth open then throw the spider into their mouth if they manage to swallow it they're innocent if they don't or the spider escapes they're guilty it's a witch trial 
to which trial meant to judge the truth from lie. If I get a sacrifice that needs punishment, I'd like to try it out immediately. It can't be that... It can't be that what's written here was actually... Did someone actually do this? Who knows? Hey, calm down. Take a deep breath. Yeah, it's okay. I'm calm. I doubt Mashita believes me. It's obvious that I'm totally rattled. Don't forget, we can't die here. Of course, I know that. I try to keep my reply as steady as possible, but my hands are keep shaking as I put the guest book in my bag. Ew. That's a Oh! Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Oh, was that done to her? Folding table and chairs stowed away, they're too big to carry around. But she was standing in front of the bathroom, so it's important. Hello! Help. I think there's a number of cracks in it. Maybe it was kicked. Touch it. Turn it upside down and shake it. A wad of paper falls out. Found a worn out talisman. Yay! I needed that. Some kind of slime is stuck to- that's good. Slime. Mm-hmm. No comment on the color. There are brand new spider webs. Was this web built last night? Okay. Now even perfectly normal spider webs are starting to look eerie. Are we leaving? Well, fifth floor time. You know, if I push down first, I start at the top, and if I push up, I start at the bottom. And I really gotta fucking remember that when I want something on the top or bottom. I'm stupid. Alright, what is this? Masquerade wife. It's a picture of a masked wife holding hands with a child. So that's... Not the last one, but that's after marriage and before she's old. Open the door and check the switchboard, but nothing looks broken at first glance. At first glance? What about second glance? It's locked door. Key in here? Hey, shine that light inside. Uh oh. Body is finally turned up. Let's check it out. Right. Why should I so fucking calm about this whole goddamn thing? There's literally a coffin right here. Is that her body? <gasps> Maybe. There's a skeleton hanging front in the restraints. Touch it. When I touch it, something flakes off. It looks like traces of dried skin. The corpse is almost a complete skeleton. Small stature, but based on the thickness of the bone, it's likely an adult male. Considering how dried out it is, I'd say it's been here for at least a year. Problem is the cause of the death. Mashita meticulously searches the corpse, then finally shakes his head. Yeah, I just can't tell. Was he strangled by spider webs? Quit joking around. A joke, huh? It'd be great if that's all it was. Still a skeleton. He must have been in pain when he died, his face is all twisted. If I was an adult male, then he was likely a guest here. No matter how hard I try to sympathize, I just can't. Hey, look at this. Mashita suddenly tosses something at me. Found it earlier, it belonged to this guy. Still has some fuel left. Keep it in your bag or something. Got cheap lighter. That'll be important. A decorative coffin, mm-hmm. The lid of the coffin. I find a book among the junk inside. Monster Encyclopedia. It's a book about different monsters from around Japan and their associated legends. Mashita flips through the book. Huh, so the spider monster originally killed people by grounding them in water. Yeah, that sounds right. I remember reading a legend like that in one of these books piled on my desk at Kujo Mansion. Usually targets woodcutters or hunters, but they always saved at the last minute. Every region has a story like that. Saved? How? They use a tree stump. Spider takes it instead. Then the protagonist escapes. Hmm, I don't get it. There's no point in complaining about folklore. 
In any case, this will make for a good reference. Take it with you. A tree stump. Something that looks like a log. Yeah, it's gonna be the horse head. So that's good to know. Open the door to the bathroom. Shut up, toilet. Um, the trash can to look inside. There's a large clump of hair inside as well as some paper waste. Resisting the urge to scream, I securely close the lid and chuck the trash can back where it was. Solving mystery gang, and by we I mean you guys. <laughs> this door is covered with mold. I bet it's because of the humidity. Touch it. Open the door and rub it around inside. Got bent hanger. Oh, I can use that to get the cylindrical thing. Perfect. Don't make noises at me, I will fight you. Okay, we're leaving, we're gonna go get the cylindrical thing. I can't remember if that was on this floor though. This one's locked, so it's down. BRB, you're gonna miss all of the spiders. Just kidding. Pretty sure it was this one. Yeah. Hmm, you know what? An idea hits me. I take out the bent hanger. Oops, I didn't mean to skip that much. I bend it into one straight wire so that it can fit down the drain. I stick it in the pipe and move it up and down. I have the sound of dirty water being dislodged and it's something hard. Got key to room 502. On the key is a tag that says Deluxe Suite. That'll come in handy. Good thing it wasn't washed down the drain. Yeah. There are sticky white threads wrapped around this key, too. It seems like they stopped it from falling all the way down the pipe. Okay. Good. Flipbot, stop telling me to drink. I want to destroy my voice, and you can't stop me. We going up to the fifth floor. Use the key to room 502 to open the door. Okay, there's a giant X here. I can't uh, comment on it, apparently. There's another Spanish horse over here. It looks like it was treated pretty roughly. The horse is lying on its side. I go to lift up the wooden horse. When I do, I notice something catch the light. Pick it up and discover it's a metal tool. It's a mouth speckle. Used. It's usually used for medical purposes, but some maniacs use it for other things. Huh? Just as I'm replying to Mashita, a white light flashes before my eyes and I black out. <laughs> it's voice acted, it's fine. I hear someone sobbing. My eyes should be open, but everything is pitch black. know what image this is. I shake my head desperately and try to look around. A horrible image flows into my mind. I haven't seen spoilers yet, so I'm... It's censored. Oh, is there a non-censored version? Oh, okay. What is this? A young girl is blindfolded and restrained. Her mouth is being forced open with that tool. Her breathing is ragged. She must have been given a drug of some kind. Yeah, of all the things to censor. Let us commence the judgment. <laughs> a man speaks theatrically behind me. I have seen this almost because it's censored. Oh. The court has decided to give the accused a fair trial and will judge her crimes. The trial will now begin. Up with the spider in the cue's mouth, and if it crawls out, she is guilty. She can swallow it. She is innocent. Upon hearing that, the girl starts jerking around frantically, her movements haphazard. Help me, sir. Help me. Oh, she said sir, so this is the teacher she went to. 
Her words are gargle from fear or the drug. <laughs> I hear men jeering. Then a man releases a giant spider. Into the girl's mouth. Hey, get a hold of yourself. Can you hear me? The spider, get it, get it! Idiot, calm down! Ugh. With a slug to the jaw, I finally return to my senses. That's right, I'm in a room at Masquerade. The vision I just saw. What did I just see? I went somewhere. You haven't gone anywhere! You just fell on the floor and started writhing. I feel like I've worked for a long- woken from a long dream. I can't believe that was a hallucination. You finally calmed down? Yeah. I'm fine now. I wipe sweat off my forehead and swallow. That girl who was restrained, was that- shit, I fucking fucking- Damn it. Was she unable to go to the police because she was caught by people here? Coffin. Decorative coffin. I open the lid of the coffin. I find a book among the junk inside. Got demon encyclopedia. The book has pictures of various demons and demonic crests and lists their characteristics. I guess the ghosts here were interested in stuff like that. Still no comment on the big X at all. Bathroom time. Open the door to the bathroom. Hello. There's a shelf to the wall. I check through all the bottles on the shelf. Got bath salts. Insect repelling cream. Well, that's good. That's good. That's very good. Bath tub. The tub is covered in dents and scratches. Too many for it to be natural water. Going by the appearance of the room, horrible things probably happened here too. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Oh, okay. I hear footsteps as I step into the hallway. I turn in the direction of the noise to see. Hey! Thought so. Sho? Sho Nakashima is standing there. Mashita said he ran into him at the hospital, but... I can't believe you came. Sho, what's the matter? I take a step toward him, but Mashita stops me. Wait, something's not right. I look closely at Sho's face. No, it couldn't be. His face is unnaturally stiff. Suddenly, he begins yelling angrily. I was looking for you this whole time. I'm going to kill you. He raises a metal. He raises a metal bat he was hiding and moves into attack. Okay. Get back, Bloodbot. Masha to yells, urging me to escape. But we're in a hallway with close walls. What should I do? So he's obviously possessed. Come on, Masha to try to protect him. Aw, shit. Quickly dodge to the right. Hey, you're not getting away. Shoes bat alters course in a flash and I take a direct hit. Shit. He straightens only to swing his bat again. I have my hands full with just trying to get away. There's no way I'll be able to restrain him. But if shows like Hero is infected with the same mysterious poison, we have to restrain him or his life's in danger. I can't do this alone, which I do. DIE! Shows deranged eyes burn a hole in me. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Uh, draws attention so that Masha doesn't do something. If my chances are thin no matter what I do, then my only choice is draw his attention. 
Show hesitates for a moment, confused. But a second later... You dumb idiot! You don't know when to give up! The metal bat flashes above his head. Then... You're the idiot. <laughs> Mashida suddenly appears next to him and throws a direct punch at his face. Whew! Show stumbles to the ground. As he falls, his bat flies through the air and... Uh, unluckily for me, it collides into the side of my head and I clamps with a painful yelp. <laughs> Dumbass. Cursing, Mashita quickly grabs Show's arm and completely restrains him. As Mashita puts his weight on him, Show groans painfully. Finally, he faints. Hey, you okay? Yeah, it just grazed me. Sit up and gently shake my head back and forth. Thankfully, everything seems fine. And give me a hand. We need to carry him out of here. He's probably like the others now. We'd better hurry. To think Sho would end up the third victim. I managed to make myself stand, but my spirits have dropped down to my feet. Ghosty Goo wanted me to be alone, so... And then we walked in and we're like, Ghosty Goo, we'll fight you! <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.